Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for joining us. My name is Lacey, and I'll be your host for this webinar. Today, we'll be hearing from Tobias Mueller and Eric Schemer. Tobias is the director of the product management for SAP Analytics Cloud, and Eric is a senior product manager for Data Warehouse Cloud. Today, Tobias and Eric will be sharing with us how SAP Analytics Cloud and SAP Data Warehouse Cloud is a match made in heaven. Before we get started, I want to go over the features able with this webinar so we are all comfortable using this space. I would like to draw your attention to the engagement bar at the bottom of your screen. I encourage you to engage with the presenter by using the Q&A widget. Feel free to ask your questions there, and our presenters will be sure to address them. I would also like to point out the resources widget where you can download the slides of today's presentation. Lastly, I would like to invite you to take, in our, take part in our survey using the survey widget located at the bottom of the screen. The survey is only two questions and helps us ensure these webinars are meeting your needs. With housekeeping being taken care of, I'd like to pass the webinar to our presenters. Go ahead, Tobias and Eric. Thanks a lot, Lacey. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar also from my side. My name is Tobias Müller, working in the product management of SAP Analytics Cloud. And today, I would like to give you an introduction of how SAP Analytics Cloud and Data Warehouse Cloud comes together with my colleague, Eric Schemer. If we talk about Analytics Cloud and Data Warehouse Cloud, we're talking about the analytics space and we're talking about how to get value out of your data. So basically, that is the main questions, question you may answer if you talk about analytics. If you want to get the value out of your data, there are several points you have to consider for your analytics strategy. So first of all, we talk about this span of data. So we have a look at data from different places coming from relational or unstructured data. We're talking about streaming data. And we need the ability to bring all these together into a single platform. So the second one is the volume. So basically means that we are talking about a massive amount of data, big data. We want to store the data. So we need an efficient way of accessing data in a very performant way. That's basically the reason why we also invented the HANA database really a couple of years before for having a, a, a high performant big data capability of a data warehouse platform. Then we talk about quality. So if you gather all these information together and store them efficiently in a database, you need to get the right data out of it. And therefore, you need different capabilities for improving the quality of your data. You need to talk about what kind of data is relevant for the business. And you need a possibility to model these and to bring governance into your data models. And being able to provide this single point of truth you need for having a consistent uh, reporting on top of your business data. And the last one is the usage itself. So here we're talking about visualizations about having the capabilities to uh, get this information and get the value out of your single point of truth um, with different disciplines, like we're talking about BI functionalities, we're talking about planning scenarios, but we are also talking about predictive scenarios. So basically, these are all the parts you need for bringing value to your data. And that's basically the, say, the, the whole strategy we are, we are following with our HANA Cloud services. So you see for every piece of this, of this formula, we have an own solution or an own service to provide that functionality. So these are all cloud-based services. And starting with the span of data, we have data intelligence in place, which brings the ability of connecting to several uh, source systems and bring this data together and stream it into a platform or acquire data and, and replicate it to a database, something like that. Then if we talk about the volume, we have SAP HANA Cloud in place, recently released in March, where you, you're able to, to store the data, where you're able to leverage existing data lakes and store the data within them and being able to yeah, efficiently, efficiently access this data. And today we are more focusing on the on the last two parts of this equation, 
which cares about the quality and about the usage of data. So we have Data Warehouse Cloud for the quality of data. So basically you will learn how Data Warehouse Cloud can help you bringing your uh, semantic view onto your whole business and the functionality of Analytics Cloud in combination with Data Warehouse Cloud to get this value out of the perfect match. So I would like to hand over to Eric to tell us something about Data Warehouse Cloud and its benefits. Up to you, Eric. Um, yeah, so I want to I take over here um, and explain a little bit the uh, HANA Cloud Services uh, strategy and then also go into the um, details of what we provide with the Data Warehouse Warehouse Cloud. And if you look at this slide here, um, you can see some of the uh, the core services that um, that we provide in within SAP HANA Cloud Services. And today we're going to focus on the Analytics Cloud that you see on the on the far right side, and next to it the SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, and how these two come together and really can bring um, more value to, to our customers. Um, all of those services are basically running on SAP um, HANA Cloud at the end of the day. And um, if, you, if you follow this uh, webinar series over the next couple of, um, of weeks, you will also see um, how we integrate data intelligence um, with SAP Analytics Cloud, but um, also with Data Warehouse Cloud to give you um, an even broader um, access to data and even more capabilities to transform data and uh, bring it into into the analytics um, solution. So if we look at the um, if we if we look at the um, data warehouse um, core values, we should also talk about the problems that we are addressing with the data warehouse cloud offering we've been quite experienced over over time with data warehousing at sap we've been delivering as, as you probably know the, the the business warehouse the bw for many years and we also have strong native sql data warehousing in our on-prem um, hana offering um, but still um, when we look at at many of our our customers we, we, we still we still see people struggling with um, things like limited data access lengthy time to value lack of real-time data and and also high entry costs and why is that um, especially the the limited data access is, is something we want to tackle with data warehouse cloud um, if you talk to people in IT, they don't complain about limited data access. They, of course, um, on the technical level, have all the means to connect the data uh, that they require. But still, if you're if you're in the business, if you're in the line of business, um, you still have that feeling that the access to data is quite limited. Um, as you have to go through uh, through IT to get data access, you often end up in basically stovepipe solutions and trying to get the data um, via, let's say, unofficial means onto your uh, onto your work screen so you um, really still feel limited data access and this is something especially from the from the LOB side of the house we would like to um, address with with data warehouse cloud and the space concept that we will later see um, there's other other topics here like um, lengthy time to value high end because they're kind of in the same in the same game here um, traditionally Data warehouse projects are expensive. They they yeah, require quite high upfront costs, um, and before you actually get to the value, where you get to to the results, um, projects um, are already kind of cost sensitive and take take some time to be built up. Because in traditional warehousing, you start on the bottom and then you build up your layers. Um, while with uh, data warehouse cloud, we really want to go the top-down approach and start with the business and the needs of the business and then model down and map down to the data uh, data sources. Well, let's also um, have a closer look at some of the key capabilities that we're using uh, in Data Warehouse Cloud to um, to address these concerns and to hopefully provide a better solution here than what was yeah. Uh, what you were able in the in the past, um, 
what you see here on the on this slide is the, is the key is the key problem that, that that you see with many traditional data warehouses um, you spend a lot of money on the left hand side building your central um, company data up into a warehouse into into a well defined um, data layer uh, you spend a lot of money you also um, spend a lot of time doing this but then we come to what was you know mentioned on the slide before is the still perceived lack of of access because this is all provided by um, by IT but then the the user the business user still feels like um, it's difficult to access that kind of highly highly governed um, data so what happens in many cases is the business user um, once he has access to the, the the key data warehouse he he starts taking the data out of the key data warehouse and puts it under his, underneath his desk into some kind of shadow um, shadow IT solution or he basically um, yeah accesses additional data where he just thinks you know that he needs for his business but where he just thinks it's far too cumbersome to get that now provided via via IT he, he starts adding that data by by himself um, so the original value of the data warehouse is already compromised quite early in the in the process here as um, the first user outside of that IT data warehouse realm is already in many cases starting to extract and is already starting to add additional data and the whole idea of the central one point of truth is already kind of at risk at this at this stage and then it kind of gets worse right then it's kind of um, yeah well the user starts to build its own data marts he starts to um, to add further data um, he starts to map the data himself and he has this kind of personal view on the data and then he starts sharing that data with others again um, adding another layer of complexity um, and that data at that stage really in many cases has nothing to do anymore with the original data in the central data warehouse and um, well then in the end we all know it um, at the worst case happens the manager or the boss of that poor guy who provided all the data comes in and really likes what he sees and says well now I want to have this on a weekly basis up on my desk and then yeah everyone's stuck because yeah you can provide something on a weekly basis now but it in many cases probably has nothing to do with the original data uh, that you have in your data warehouse so this is a, a process that we see all the time and um, this is something we put a lot of thinking in um, in the in the data warehouse cloud uh, with the concept of um, spaces so basically with with the space concept we can empower um, line of business users with a kind of virtual playground where they can bring in data where they can draw on data from the central data warehouse um, while maintaining security and governance so basically we are in a well-managed environment but the end user doesn't feel like he's constrained because within the space he has all the flexibility um, yeah, to, to work with the data and to add additional data. But it's still going to happen within that one governed, secure, trusted space. So the space concept really empowers the user to actively work with the data warehouse cloud data as it is provided by IT and enrich it with its own data in his own subject matter of expertise um, and we're gonna stop you know copying data from A to B to C and so forth and manipulating because we still work on the original data warehouse cloud data we are just adding data uh, enrich the data um, on top but we are not um, let's say messing around with the original data from the data warehouse cloud because that is still well maintained and accessible uh, in the space. And then on top of that space, um, and we will see that later, we can immediately seamlessly use um, SAP Analytics Cloud to provide the, the, the analytics, the, 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 the visualization and exploration capabilities on the data that is, uh, that is residing in such a data warehouse cloud space. The, um, the other aspect of this 
um, problem scenario that I described in the beginning. The 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 other the other solution to to that problem is um, the second I would say key capability that we have baked into data warehouse cloud, and that is the so-called um, business layer. Um, if you want to provide a data warehouse solution to the business, you need to overcome the problem that your typical user is not a technical user. It's not a, uh, it's not the developer. So you need to be able to talk the language of the business with the solution, the toolage in the in the solution, and the workflows in the solution need to be designed in a way that a business user can work with it. And uh, this, this is why we have a clear separation in Data Warehouse Cloud between the business layer and the data layer. Um, and really, um, yeah, we, we, we want to foster and really get people to, to think that way that they can start with a top-down approach. So where the business can take control of defining the semantics, defining the KPIs, the key figures, you know, the, the dimensions um, for a specific use case, or also um, in, a, in a corporate approach across the enterprise, define, define a semantic layer um, from the business side of the house. And then um, as this is kind of well-defined and clearly separated from the data layer, we can then basically give the task of mapping the business layer to the underlying tables and views to a technical person. So we can separate the business savvy from the technical savvy um, persona. In some customers, in some in some use cases, that's the same guy. But in many cases, obviously, those are really different different roles. And with Data Warehouse Cloud, we can have this clear separation of defining a well-defined business layer and then mapping this to a robust and performance-optimized, this is also important, performance-optimized data layer. So we have basically best of both worlds um, in the Data Warehouse Cloud. And with the SAP Analytics Cloud, again, because it's seamlessly integrated, the semantics that you define in your business layer are immediately accessible when you visualize, when you explore, when you analyze the data with SAP Analytics Cloud on top. So it's basically a baked in integration of the business layer and its semantics with the um, SAC, the SAP Analytics Cloud layer on top of that. Now let's look into um, some of the key scenarios that we are providing with the SAP Data, Data Warehouse Cloud. And um, one key, key, um, the key value of the product is that we do not want to separate this um, too far from our on-prem solutions. Like we don't want to, you know, we don't want to force people who are nowadays working in BW, for example, to basically throw that all away and recreate everything in Data Warehouse Cloud. We really want to um, yeah, take this hybrid scenarios very, very um, seriously and need to make sure that whatever you build within your W system up to the, the query layer can be um, accessed and reused and leveraged in the data warehouse cloud modeling. So there's a tight integration with on-prem scenarios, not just BW, but also S4 and others, uh, where you can basically leverage data warehouse cloud on top of what you've already done in, in your on-prem world. Um, then with the um, additional um, advantages of the space concept and the business layer, um, we provide the tools and the environment that you can take that data from your on-prem environments and not only leverage it in the cloud, but you can easily extend it, adjust it um, in, for example, data mart scenarios. And um, last but not, but not least, what you can see here on the slides is we don't want to stop there. Um, Data Warehouse Cloud, of course, will 
evolve uh, into a fully fledged enterprise wide data warehouse with cross application warehousing across your complete company, across your complete enterprise, regardless of SAP data or any other data. This is a completely open solution uh, to build an enterprise grade data warehouse in the cloud. Um, I also want to quickly elaborate a little bit on the architecture. And we started with giving you a bit of a view on the HANA cloud services as our overarching umbrella. And you find this now here if you look into, into the architecture as well. Um, if you start here with the let, let's start here with the data warehouse cloud piece so the the, the piece that is kind of framed in this uh, slide or this light orange um, box um, this is the the data warehouse application the the governance services the data modeling services the separate business modeling services repository security those are the aspects of the data warehouse cloud application um, that the data warehouse got as a service brings uh, brings on the on the table. Um, underneath that, we are using services from from Hana Cloud, of course, like the in-memory uh, technology. We um, the way to kind of um, bring data uh, to, to to move data from hot to warm to cold storage, like from in-memory um, to disk. Um, these are services that we don't where we don't have to reinvent the the wheel, but where we can still where we can sit on the shoulders of of Hana Cloud, and the services of Hana Cloud, and um, we also have uh, via Hana Cloud uh, the replication capabilities, the connection management, the virtual access. We can plug in um, the the Hana data lake, which is part of the Hana Cloud serve, uh, offering now. Uh, or we can also plug in a third-party data lake. And uh, we have the full access underneath um, via SDI uh, into all kinds of um, non-SAP, SAP, SAP on-prem cloud services and data sources. And then on top of that, uh, we have the SAP Analytics Cloud, um, the integration with the analytics, with the, with the story building, with the application building, um, all that is tightly integrated directly with your business modeling uh, in Data Warehouse Cloud. So before we dive into the SAC side, and then also look at some of the, um, the examples um, of integration, um, I would like you to pay a little bit attention to this um, to this slide here here that I think quite well summarizes the, the joint value proposition of SAP Analytics Cloud being used in conjunction with the SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. Um, you can see if we, if we start on the left-hand side with, with SAP Analytics Cloud, what's the key focus of Analytics Cloud? The, the, the key focus there lies on self-service, ad hoc data exploration, visualization, intelligent augmentation, business planning, right? So um, a very strong focus on business user enablement and on ad hoc. So basically the, the whole no, the, the, the notion of being able to use SAP Analytics Cloud as a solution out of the box without having to go to IT, without having to go to, to technical users in the, in the first place. The, the system is right there, ready to be used by the business users. He can by himself, you know, do the, do the data reigning, bring in data, and immediately start um, start using the great visualization capabilities of of Analytics Cloud. So it's a very top down enabled system, always starting with the with the business user. On the other hand, um, SAC offers the bottom up approach as well. Like you, you know, you have the modeling, you have you have strong modeling capabilities in in SAC. Where you are probably with you know a, a bit more of skilled user, a power user, you can build uh, you can build models that draw on data that you lo load into SAC, or you can build remote models on 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 
systems that you cannot connect live to to SAP Analytics Cloud and then provide those models to your um, to your end user. So you have these two scenarios. Um, and the same now, if you, if you move to the data warehouse cloud, we have basically we have also we have these same two um, scenarios. We have we are building the solution in a way that it can be used top down, right? If you're a business user, if you're a power user in the business, you can use the tool for business modeling. You can use the tool to tool to build a semantic layer that then can be used um, additionally to your SAC models. So I would see it this way, if, if SAC models to a certain extent are like the, the, the little sister of the data warehouse cloud models. You know, the, the SAC models come already with a lot of capabilities, um, but you may want to go, if you, you know, if you if you build your SAP Analytics cloud solution out into into the complete enterprise, if you if you spread and 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 grow the solution, you may want to um, put your foundation on an even stronger um, modeling capability. And I think that's what what Data Warehouse Cloud can bring to the table here. That you can not only build you know multiple models that are supporting your business, you can build a fully fledged semantic layer across the whole business, across the whole enterprise price and then use that as a strong foundation for analytics cloud and um, with the with it, what additionally what data warehouse cloud can bring to the day table is this is splitting up the business from the data layer right if you're in if you're building a model in sap analytics cloud it's an integrated model it, it has business aspects you define semantics in the model but it also has data layer layer aspects like you need to model it in a way that it's performant and robust and doesn't break right we do that all in the sac model um, if you grow to much larger scenarios it makes sense to separate those two so that you can have a perfect business model that is abstracted from a perfectly robust data model and this is what data warehouse cloud really can offer here that you basically um, separate the business from the from the data model and then in both worlds in the business layer and in the data layer you can take care of what's really important in those layers and um, then if you plug both tools together you basically get the best of both worlds and uh, with that i will hand back to tobias thank you Yeah, thank you, Eric. So let us move a little bit into the <coughs> analytics cloud direction. So basically what you can see here in the slide is um, uh, well already been well explained by Eric. So um, we have all the different data sources here and with Data Warehouse Cloud, we're really able to build up this data layer and the business layer to provide this single point of truth for, for accessing all the relevant data you're able to 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 mesh that up as LOB with your own data you want to bring to the table. And then you can reuse all this in Analytics Cloud to, to explore data, to visualize it, to use the augmented features of SAC and also for your planning purposes in the future. So let's have a little deeper look into SAC itself. So um, at the target group, you already you already know SAC in, 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 in some to some extent. But let me just summarize it again, like Analytics Cloud, the main focus of Analytics Cloud is bringing together different disciplines of, of analytics in one single tool. So here basically we're talking about BI functionality. So this is about discovery and exploration. So being able to easily explore and analyze, slice and dice through the whole data set you are, you're looking at then being able to create stories, dashboards on top of it, and make use of powerful visualization capabilities to uh, yeah, to get uh, value out of the data here. And something which could be new to you is the topic of enterprise reporting as well. So with SAC, we are targeting to provide enterprise reporting capabilities in the near future, where you're able to to yeah uh, build build up printable formatted reports 
push it out at every first of the month to a specific target group. These are kind of traditional BI use cases, but we see for adoption purposes for our customers, we are now really bring also these enterprise reporting use cases to Analytics Cloud to provide a, a smoother journey into, into the cloud in this direction. If we're talking about augmented analytics, and this is something which is which is really new to our portfolio here um, with Analytics Cloud, uh, we've already spent a lot of investment here for providing augmented features in the last couple of years. Um, basically, we're talking here about conversation analytics. So being able to, to uh, yeah, ask questions to the system, being able to use to use it in a very natural way for for exploring data, asking questions, getting answers from the system, and also getting explanations. So if we talk about automated analytics, we talk about the system being able to provide insights why, for example, the revenue in a certain region has dropped. Uh, so the system and all the machine learning algorithms behind it uh, help me in understanding my uh, data in a better way and to get the, the most valuable information out of it. And we're also providing predictive analytics scenarios where you're able to yeah, prepare uh, data for predictive, uh, predictive scenarios where you're able to do something like time series forecasting or segmentations and all that stuff and make use of it for your BI or planning use cases. And last but not least, um, the collabor collaborative planning um, a point uh, for being able to, to use SAC as your single planning tool um, to bring all the planning scenarios of your different LOBs together into a joint planning process and uh, yeah, really connect this together with all the BI and augmented capabilities we already have with Analytics Cloud. And with these capabilities, you have different assets you can create already mentioned, like stories, which is really self-service BI, where the business is able to create the, the dashboards for their own. You're able to, to make use of the stories in digital boardroom to provide executives a very, very special and premium um, access point for all the relevant information for the company. And you're able to create so-called analytic applications where you can make use of scripting and extensions if the, the, the frame of stories and the standard features here uh, are not enough or you want to provide very guided analytic scenarios, you can make use of these analytic applications. Uh, most of our customers already know this concept from our past business object solution like Numero Designer where you're able to create on and script these applications. You will also see a demo of this one later. And last but not least, what we also provide is an Office integration. Uh, we recently released the Office 365 add-in, where you're able to use Excel online or Excel on, the, on your desktop to analyze data, which is provided in Analytics Cloud. And on top of all these assets, you can access them in different ways. And one of the ways is through a hub or a so-called catalog. So basically being able to provide um, um, stories or, or dashboards to the business user in a very easy and structured way. So don't, you don't have to have to browse any file structure anymore. You're able to provide these assets and, and tag them and make it usable and searchable for the end users. I will also have a short look under this in my demo in a few seconds. And in addition to that, of course, we are also able to provide the, all these applications and all these dashboards on mobile devices. So for iOS and recently released also for Android, um, making this available on all your mobile devices. And just one sentence to the platform services itself. So, of course, we have a lot of platform services already. We're talking about data connectivity, where Eric already mentioned that we have a very tight integration with Data Warehouse Cloud. We have own modeling capabilities, uh, which are really suited to this very self-service process. And um, yeah, last but not least, we are, of course, sharing platform services with Data Warehouse Cloud. So we do, do not have two separated 
user management, uh, for example, or like uh, authorization and role management. Uh, these are shared services between both products since they use the same technology stack here. So what are we providing with Data Warehouse Cloud already today in terms of integration? First, this is the analytics cloud story builder. So where you're able to directly on top of data warehouse cloud views, you're able to create stories. You don't have to create analytics cloud models anymore. So you have a direct connection here and um, being able to, to leverage all the powerful visualization capabilities of uh, analytics cloud. We'll see all this in the demo. Um, then of course you can use uh, our data exploration so um, being able to use this facet search and slice and dice through the whole data set, um, which is available in this data warehouse cloud view. And last but not least, uh, now also recently released is the ability to use analytics designer applications, analytic applications on top of your data warehouse cloud views um, to yeah, build up these guided analytics scenarios where you're really able to use extensions and scriptings and all that stuff. So. Enough of the slides, so let's jump into the system. Uh, we've prepared a little bit of demo content for you. So I will share my screen. I hope you can see it. And we start with the home screen of Analytics Cloud. So that's what you already know from C. Um, and I want to uh, highlight uh, this catalog functionality I've mentioned. Um, so here being able to move to our favorites tab and you don't have to browse any file structure anymore you're able to see all the different assets which are available in your company you're able to search through them you have specific filters you can use um, and you can directly jump into these assets here or first of all have a look at some descriptions or some specific kpi definitions which are used for it something like that and then jump over to the story itself what you can see now is a typical analytics cloud dashboard the story where you can get an overview of your company data you can see how it's evolving through um, over the year you can see different uh, different um, different product groups here uh, you could also use for example like drilling down here into the product hierarchy and this is all leveraged through data warehouse cloud views here so you don't have you haven't seen data warehouse cloud yet but uh, it's already behind it so um it's directly integrated into your normal way of handling sac so let's now have a look at the data source of this report we've seen so i now just simply switch the view from analytics to data warehouse and now moving over to the data warehouse cloud view here um where I'm now in this in this in this area where I have the possibility as power user to really create my own own views here to bring in all data. So I want to show you a scenario where we bring together data coming from uh, from a BW system uh, together with data which is uploaded into Data Warehouse Cloud. So I move over to the data builder here, and now we can see this so-called space concept here, where in this case we just have one space available this is called the bike sales 2020 but this could also be like we have different spaces coming from different lobs or different projects so this is the pl playground eric was talking about if i now select this space i'm uh, i'm in the data builder here and we will now have a look at a specific view which has been created so let's dive into this one and what we can see here is that we have sales order items at the top and sales orders and if we have a look at the examples here we see this is the bw4 connection which is used uh, you can uh, as bw uh, uh, very knowledge bw guys you know this technical namings here um, and you can see the different data which is coming in this case from the bw system here and we bring this together with data coming from data warehouse cloud itself so we have the sales order items here uh, which is uploaded into data warehouse cloud and we bring a virtual data together with persistent data and data warehouse cloud itself so here you can make use of different join functionalities you can transform the data and last but not least you can create your own measures you want to bring to the usage layer 
where uh, we have here the cross amount, net amount, we have all the different attributes and dimensions. Uh, here you can define uh, some why, somehow the semantics you make use of if you, if you build up your story. So if this is built up, then you can just directly switch to the so-called story builder. So this is directly integrated into the data warehouse cloud user interface. And if we now move over to this best run bike demo here, you can see this is exactly the same story which I have brought up in the SAC view, yeah, um, which you can build here in the data warehouse cloud user interface, but you can reuse it uh, in the analytics cloud. So the, the real business end user won't see data warehouse cloud. He just can open this up in his normal analytics cloud screen and uh, make use of it. And just to give you uh, a couple of, of, uh, of impressions on how easy this is, well, just let's create a, a short story here. So <clears throat> the first thing I have to select is the data warehouse cloud view I want to use. So as I already said, like you don't need to create uh, an analytics cloud model on top of it. So you can directly use this uh, view what we have seen here. And just click on OK. And well, now I'm already able to create this report itself. So let's create a chart. And here just for, as an example, let's put in the gross amount and let's put in the product and what we are able to see here. Uh, let's take the, just the gross amount here. What we are able to see now is like, if we open up the explore mode just do a right click here. That's what I wanted to show. The, the ability to slice and dice through the whole data set itself. Yeah? So we see here our measures. We see all the different dimensions here, which are used in the data set itself. And we can just now, yeah, so filter on it. And uh, for example, just yeah, go into, put it on different uh, regions. So yeah. Um, uh, that's the normal effect here. <laughs> but anyhow, so you know the, the, the different exploration capabilities from SAC already. This can all directly be used inside Data Warehouse Cloud. Um, but of course, you could also switch again to the analytics cloud area. And here, if I go into the browse files, you will see, you will see the possibilities. Uh, and you will see that we have a, a space called Analytics Cloud, where all the normal Analytics Cloud contents are inside, you already know. And then you have here the different other spaces in the system where the different data sets or applications or stories are inside. So you see this is very tight together. And um, yeah, so you're able to make use of the different use, different views you want to want to leverage. So that's it from my side. So let me take that over to Eric again for giving us a short demo of Analytics Designer. Thanks, Tobias. Um, that was a great demo. I, um, yeah, I would like to, to add now um, towards the end of the, of the session, just a, a short demo also on the, um, on the Analytics Designer. So yeah, we've, we've seen the, the great self-service capabilities of the story builder uh, live and in full color, so to speak, on um, on Data Warehouse Cloud. And um, well, the, the analytics designer is a little bit of a different uh, different tool. It's more for the expert user and the and the developer. So basically, where you want to build, let's say, uh, maybe a more sophisticated application rather than you know doing the, the self service visualization. Really, you know, want to have a toolage for for a developer like an like an IDE where, where you can script and build a more complex analytical application and uh, we just recently also integrated this uh, seamlessly with um, data warehouse cloud and um, I again I'm going to start here with um, with the data warehouse cloud home screen and uh, we, we we baked some of those capabilities uh, like the story builder right here into um, into the um, into the menu of data warehouse cloud but um, let me also highlight the the app switcher because i think this is a more convenient way to basically run over from data warehouse cloud into your, 
your full SAC application. And um, again, here, if I go into the browse section under files, I find um, I find all the spaces, uh, the spaces that I have in my in my data warehouse cloud system. And um, to access now or to build an analytical application again, we simply have to um, pick the space we are using. And uh, well, we get all all the artifacts that are in that space. So we get, you know, we get the stories, we get the views, the local tables, um, everything that is residing in that space and has been created by the business users is here. And yeah, there we go. We also see analytical applications uh, showing up here. And um, we're just going to pick one of those that have already been um, created. And the system immediately gets you into the analytics designer um, yeah, design time, into, in, into the tool itself, um, where you then go and can really, you know, as a de developer, go and code your um, analytical application. Um, and I just wanted to show you this example here that runs live now on the Data Warehouse Cloud model. And for this, I will leave the design environment and basically launch the application here, right, in the browser. This takes a little while. Let me also increase here my screen size a little bit. Um, and I think this also explains quite well the difference, let's say, between a story and an application. I always say, you know, a story is like a PowerPoint, while an application is like, yeah, an app, an app that you probably that you, that you may use, for example, on your on your phone. And um, this is a bike parking app. So what what's happening in the background is we have quite a sophisticated model in Data Warehouse Cloud that uh, gets real time data um, from a bike parking from bike parking lots, and as an end user of that application, you know, I could as well, I could have I could have this application, for example, on my mobile device. Uh, I can pick a an, a bike parking place where I would like to yeah park my bike. So I'm choosing here one of the parking spaces uh, in Berlin, and we can see there's 62 places open. And we can see, you know, the app can basically show me what kind of bike parking places here are available. We have a standard parking lot for 70 cents an hour, and then it goes up um, for an e-charging place. Um, let's just pick the standard one. And we can see that there's uh, different places available here. So what the application does is, if I pick one of those, it actually visualizes me um, where this parking lot is located in the in the in the in the warehouse in the in the parking house. And well, I can pick my favorite space and then go off and um, hey. And yeah, I won't continue here, but basically we can now start the payment process here, for example, via PayPal. Um, of course, if it happens to be an S4 system in the background, um, that you know that payment will be done via the SAP system. And um, the Data Warehouse Cloud model as such has live connectivity back into, into S4 and the up Updated data, the real-time data, um, will be available in the data warehouse cloud model, of course. So the, the the model knows now. Well, this place is taken, and won't offer it anymore in the in the application until you know it's uh, it becomes free again. So this is just a very simple example on how you can run a full circle of um, accessing data, live data from an ERP system or any system in Data Warehouse Cloud, you can build a fully-fledged 
a nice usable application on top and that application um, via that application you can even write back data again from the application into the underlying system which again can in real time feed that data back into data warehouse cloud and with that uh, demonstration i think we're coming uh, we're coming to the end here of the of the show and um, i'll hand back to our moderator for the final words. Uh, thank you all. <laughs>